it's Jay. Last time we got together, what did we do? We built an application using Azure App Service. Uh, we deployed it thanks to uh, Azure DevOps, and um, we used uh, pipelines to do all of our CI CD. So we're gonna do something pretty similar, but this time we're not gonna use Azure DevOps. Oh no. This time, what we're going to do is we're gonna use GitHub Actions. So we'll do a lot of the same stuff. We'll go ahead and do it all through the deployment center really simply, uh, but this time, we'll do it all right through GitHub Actions. Sound good? Let's get into it. So last time we did this, like I said, uh, what we did was we built this uh, using Azure DevOps. Uh, if you remember, we I can bring it up real quick for you, Dev. Uh, Azure.com. So we'll go to dev.azure.com. We'll go to React Clock, or no, it's J Clock. Excuse me. So we'll go to J Clock. Uh, we'll go to my project. And if you recall from the last video where we talked about this, we used the pipelines to create a CI uh, pipeline where it built all of our application. Uh, and then what we would do is use a release pipeline. And then the release pipeline would then give you all the releases and information. Uh, and what it would do is do it all from my Git repository, but I also have the option of using repos, uh, in integrating test plans, artifacts, doing compliance work. Um, and then also there's the integration with like boards so that you can have workflows around the stuff you're doing. Now, if this isn't something that you want, we can also do a deployment in the deployment center using GitHub Actions. Um, if you wanna know more about GitHub Actions and what they do, uh, essentially they are a CI, CD uh, built into GitHub. Uh, we won't need to use Azure DevOps. We'll do everything uh, within our uh, deployment center. It'll build everything, including a uh, an Azure deployment uh, GitHub Actions uh, YAML file. It'll put it here into the repository, uh, commit it, and then that will eventually trigger Actions. Uh, you can see some of my old actions that I've done in the past around this, and you can see that it completed CI CD runs or failed. I've had a lot of stuff that I do with this app to test it. You can clone it and do whatever you want. Um, the app that we're going to work with, uh, you might have seen me work with it before. It's a stateless clock. It's exactly what I say it is. It's just a simple clock. Uh, in the recent uh, like weeks since I've started doing these videos, I've actually made some changes to this. I updated uh, some packages. I went ahead and uh, made a, just a couple things to make this work a little better. Uh, and so far, so good. So what we're gonna do with it today, uh, last time, like I said, we built everything and we did it uh, here in the uh, deployment center. Let me go to our clock. This is our clock app. Uh, so we're not going to build everything all over again. What I'm going to do is just go to the deployment center. This is already a host, uh, like a ready to go. So right last time we worked with this, we used Azure pipelines. And that's how all of our deployments were going to be done. That's fine. We can actually do this. We can disconnect it. Are you sure you want to disconnect your employment? Yes. What is this going to do? It's going to disconnect the CI CD pipelines from Azure DevOps, the Azure repos, the whole thing that's that's still exists. The the actual um, configuration in Azure DevOps is still there. The big difference is that we're not using it anymore uh, in the deployment center. So this time what we're going to do is go into GitHub. Uh, when we select in the deployment center, what our uh, CI CD be. Uh, uh, I should say where our CI CD target is. So we're going to use GitHub. Uh, we've already authenticated my account. If you want to, you can click change account or actually just log in. You'll get a prompt. It'll ask you for username, password. If you're using two factor, it'll ask you to two factor in. So we'll go ahead and click continue. So here's where it starts getting different. So last time we used Azure pipelines, which are in preview um, to con. Uh, and it's, it's essentially what the old uh, visual uh, team services uh, online stuff was. Um, this time we're going to use GitHub Actions. Um, and this is free. It'll add the YAML that we need for our workflow. So uh, let's, before we do that, let's take a quick look. GitHub Actions. 
Oops. YAML. Uh, and we'll look at the syntax. Right here in their help, lots of information. A workflow is a configurable automated process. So you can build these uh, by hand. You can select usage limits. You can choose all the different triggers that actually create a release and then eventually release uh, to deploy. Um, you can use any target you want, but we're going to use some automated stuff that Azure makes easy for you. So uh, we'll use GitHub Actions and then we'll continue. So now we're going to go and pick our organization. Uh, that's my account. So I'm going to use uh, JDestro. That is my uh, repository accounts. Uh, then we'll go to my repo. Uh, and what we're going to do is pick my repository in here. And if you see, I've got all this different stuff. But we're going to use React Clock Basic. We're going to build off master. If I had uh, a different branch with some changes and I wanted to run a deployment off that, I could. I don't need to. So let's look at the Docker file. The Docker file is using Node 12, so we can use Node 12 as our runtime stack. Uh, so we'll hit continue. And so this is what's going to happen. Uh, the deployment center is going to create a GitHub Action workflow configuration. So uh, let's take a look at what that's doing. Uh, I'll blow this up just a bit for you. So uh, we're going to build and deploy a Node.js application uh, to an Azure Web App Service, my clock, Jay's clock. This will push whenever anything happens on a master branch. Uh, whenever something uh, on the master branch changes, this will trigger a new build. Uh, what will happen then is it will build and deploy Ubuntu latest. Uh, so that, uh, I should say a build and deploy on an Ubuntu latest image. Um, it'll use checkout from master. It'll go ahead, it'll install 12.1 uh, of Node.js. It'll build it uh, and test it, install it. And then eventually, uh, and, and the tests will only run if they're present. So in this particular case, we don't have any tests in here will build tests in the future. Like I said, the point of doing these videos is I'm taking a step and step through different deployments. We're using a similar application every time because I just want you to know how to do it in the different ways that makes uh, deployment simpler within Azure. So now we'll go here in the deployment center and uh, we'll see all the things that eventually after our build is done and our install, our NPM install is done, it will eventually deploy this application to the app service Jay's clock, the slot production. I'll show you that slot in just a second, uh, but we're gonna hit finish. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and let's go back to the code. See what's just been created? is now we have this GitHub workflows file. And we'll see that in the Azure logs, we've actually modified from a GitHub uh, to a GitHub action as opposed to using Azure pipelines. So let's go to our actions right here. And we're gonna see right now we have uh, our build that's going on in our deployment. So we remember when we did this in Azure DevOps, we got to see uh, what was going on. So let's click on the, the workflow that's currently running. And if we click on the commit, we're going to see we have one progress, uh, one job in progress, and uh, it's essentially going to start doing the build. So let's see what it did. It set up the job. It ran the actions. Essentially, what was in the YAML file, we wanted to get the repository. We wanted to uh, eventually check it out. We're going to then set up Node.js. So we installed 12.16.3. We eventually did our NPM install. So this is actually installing our application, the runtime. We see here, I didn't specify any tests, so the build is fine. I mean, I just hit deploy, I mean, commit a few minutes ago or less than a minute ago, it's just what, a minute or two ago? And now we're already in the deploy to web app uh, portion of it. And then uh, what we can do, if we wanted to, is we can go back to Azure, we can go to Jay's clock. And if you recall, 
last time, one of the really cool things, and let me shrink this back so we can see it. One of the cool things I showed you is that we can watch what's going on in the background is um, we go ahead and click Jay's clock. We go into the app service and we look at log stream. So this is diagnostic information live from the uh, containers that are being built. Azure is going to give you all the information of the, the, what's going on over here after the actual uh, build has been done. So what's going to happen is a build is going to create some form of artifact. Uh, and that artifact is eventually going to get deployed to Azure. So right now, GitHub Actions is uh, essentially sending our built package over to Azure. Azure is then going to take that package, create an image, build that image, and then load that image into a Docker container, essentially. So here we go. Our application is extracting. And we can see that on the GitHub action side, I'll make it a little bigger for you. We see here that um, our job is completed and uh, all of our cleanup is done. And if we look over here on the, uh, on the Azure side, it looks like our build is complete and it's serving. And we can see our application on the container is running at localhost. So now what we can do just go to overview and let's click on the URL. The clock is up. Okay. So let's kind of review real quickly what we did. And then we'll take a look at uh, one more thing. So we built here in GitHub. Uh, we'll go back to actions, the main section. And we added uh, a new workflow. That workflow you can see here it was completed. We had a workflow file right here. The workflow file was committed to our uh, master branch in .github workflows. So let's shrink that a little. Um, and what you can see this does is it creates an app service. It deploys it to Azure, or I should say it actually uh, start from the beginning. Like I said, it will go ahead, check out master branch of our application configure Node.js, install our application, run any tests, and do a build if present. Um, and then eventually, once that's complete and it passes everything, uh, it'll deploy it to Azure. So that's what we did in just a few minutes together. Now, what if we uh, wanted to do our deployment to a deployment slot? Because you see, um, we have this uh, slot name production right here. Let me bring that up a little. Right here, slot name production. Now, if you go to deployment slots, what you'll see here is a production slot. And right now, 100% of the traffic is going uh, to this current production slot. If I wanted to, I can add an additional slot and call it prod2. We can clone the settings and then click add. So then what will happen is, if we'd like to, we can modify the production slot that we're actually going to uh, do in the future. So if we wanted to do a deploy uh, to another branch, we can commit actually a new branch, call it prod2. Build the workflow so that we deploy to this prod2 branch. And then what we could do if we wanted to is split the traffic between the two. Uh, and, and allow us to do some blue-green testing to see whether or not our new changes are, are really uh, working. So um, one more time, let's just show you, if we go back to the code, we've got this new GitHub workflows file. If I were to make any change in this repo, and that includes uh, my documentation, so let's go in here. And uh, I said I recently updated the version of Node. Let's look up Node. So let's update this. So we don't need Node 8. We can just say Node 12x. So we just go ahead and we'll just update this to Node 12. And then I will go ahead and commit the change. So update readme. 
We'll go back here to Deployment Center and we'll look what happens in the logs as we make a new deployment change. So updated docs. And I'm just doing this through the uh, GUI to show you that we don't need to know big time Git stuff. Uh, we don't need to understand how to write YAML to create our deployments. We can just do it all uh, through some of these uh, simple GUI tools and not necessarily uh, need to be the most uh, DevOpsy person in the world. We don't need to be the greatest developer in the world. We just need to understand the fundamentals of how these tools work within Azure uh, and within GitHub so that it makes you really simply build these new uh, features into your application, make it simpler, uh, and automate everything. So let's go back to Actions and see our deploy is currently working. It's going to do whatever change is going to always update what our application, if the readme is part of the re repository, it's going to validate if it's got something uh, that you actually test in the docs for. Like, let's say you make a change and you want to make sure that something in the change is validated, that there's no broken markdown and you have a lint test. Build that in. You can do all that. So uh, let's wrap everything up. If you need any of the documentation, um, there'll be a link at the end. I think you'll really uh, find a lot of uh, interesting information in the docs I provide. Um, and more than anything, I'm glad you kind of get all the information you need to make this an easy journey into the cloud using Azure, GitHub, and other great uh, tools. So thanks for watching. So we learned a bunch. If you want to keep learning, check out this link. Uh, hopefully you will continue into your DevOps journey. My name is Jay Gordon, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.